Hello, and I wanted to thank all of you for being investors and in initiative I'm going to update you on, which is the Michigan Small Business Development Center, also known as the SBDC. And I say investors because the SBDC is funded primarily by federal and state funding uh, driven by tax dollars. The mission of the SBDC is to help the success of small business. We have a team of approximately 100 spread all across the state of Michigan in 10 regional centers. The favorite regional center, in my heart, the one I'd like to visit the most is right here in, in Traverse City. Uh, you have a SBDC office over by the Michigan Works Networks Northwest office. The SBDC provides no-cost counseling on various business aspects, including capital formation. Last year, we worked with small business in the state to raise over $250 million of capital. That includes bank financing and venture capital financing. But we also do things like strategic analysis and market research assistance. There's a tech commercialization team, and the SBDC also administers some state of Michigan funds for things like business accelerator funding and emerging, emerging technology funding. So we do a lot, as that quick description probably indicates. But I also wanted to share tonight how we look to the future. The SBDC focuses not only on the state facing small businesses today, but the state of doing business around the corner. And it's kind of interesting as we peer around the corner at all the changes coming down the road a couple decades from now, it's quite likely that virtual reality will affect small business augmented reality, drones certainly, personal service robots. But the approaching technology that is the closest at hand to changing the life of small business that we're working on this year to start to lay out some, some transformation scenarios is autonomous vehicles. Autonomous vehicles are here. You know, they exist. Just a couple weeks ago, I was riding around in one at a U of M initiative, State of Michigan initiative called M City, and our autonomous vehicle approach to intersection as another did. It was a little bit nerve wracking to see if either one would break, uh, but one of them did, the other guy, and we went through the intersection. Uh, about two, three weeks ago, Governor Snyder signed some new legislation that makes Michigan one of, not only one of seven states in the nation that permit autonomous vehicles today, but the most liberal in the nation in the respect that we can have autonomous vehicles without steering wheels, without brakes, without humans. So this change is upon us. They're on the roads today in test formations and now moving beyond test formations. So how does that impact small business? At the SBDC, we're starting to map out some ways it will impact small business. And I'm not talking just auto supply chain or tech supply component suppliers. We're looking at Main Street business impact. We're working with organizations like MEDC and Automation Alley to start to look at some use cases. There's an estimate that one million lives a year are lost in preventable accidents that, based on research, should go away in the era of autonomous vehicles across the world. That's a lot of lives, but also even more fender benders. So the prospects for tow trucks and auto body shop businesses, of course, transform 10 years down the road. But what if you're an attorney? Does your life change at all? Well, probably if you're a DUI attorney. What if you own a chain of physical therapy uh, offices? There's a good chance that that will affect you. What if you own a microbrewery? Could that possibly affect you? Certainly your customers can get home more safely. But there's a lot of ripple effects to this transformation. If you're launching a restaurant or a microbrewery, right now what's one of the key things that you need if you want customers to reach you? Parking, parking, and more parking for many businesses. And the predictions with autonomous vehicles are not just that our way of moving from point A to B changes and we can kick back and enjoy it, but the very uh, the landscape around us changes, roads change, the nature of parking changes. Car ownership is predicted by most experts to plummet on a personal consumer basis and shift to businesses that rent us slices of uh, cars. So we are in an exciting process of starting to map out these changes across various businesses. It's just one small part of what we do, but I thought it was one that might interest you. So my request for you is if you're curious about how the SBDC can support you, 
Uh, just Google Michigan SBDC and you'll find more information on our organization. The, the services are no cost aside from certain trainings, but for the most part it's no cost services. And we're here to help. And also if you have thoughts on how your industry, your business might be impacted five or 15 years from now, let us know. Shoot me an email or let me know tonight because we're mapping out the future. Thank you. We do work with businesses prepping for angel investors and venture capitalists. My background before I stepped into the state director role was that of a tech entrepreneur, business builder. I'd grown a couple businesses and had them happily acquired, I always like to say. And uh, I've pitched to angels and VCs many a, many a time. Uh, and it's a fulfilling mission the SBDC has to work with businesses that are trying to figure out their path, but that certainly includes pitch preparation. There's an event once a year called Michigan Accelerates, which some of you may be familiar with. The state of Michigan provides large cash awards to businesses based on pitches. And in that event, it brings together a gathering of the state's angels and VCs, among others. The SBDC has a role with that specific event in doing some of the pitch coaching to prep. But we do it in general as well. Any other questions? Uh, Russell? I don't really have a question. I have an endorsement. Um, I <laughs> actually worked with Keith. I met him probably over a year ago, and uh, he's introduced me to some, some investors. And uh, probably the most important thing to do is they help me kind of refine my pitch. Um, he introduced me to some people that you know, taught me how to do a better presentation, um, how to kind of put on a better show, or this kind of thing. So, um, anyway, I just want to say that SBDC is very helpful for my company. So. Oh, th thank you, Russell. I appreciate that. Yeah, and from past experience in my entrepreneurial days, I understand that fundraising uh, can be a sometimes a black hole of a process. It can take so long to navigate, and you can get lost in hopping from one source to another to another, and then giving <coughs> updates. So one of the things we like to do is provide guidance on that process as well. We also work with businesses as they prep for bank loans. We have former bankers among our team members that used to be on the other side of the, uh, the desk and we help prepare loan packages and we work, the banks always make the decisions or the VCs, but they do appreciate that we work to help give them you know, well-polished uh, business candidates you know, asking for funding. There's usually at least one cynic in every crowd that doesn't believe autonomous vehicles are coming, so if you're that cynic, definitely catch me uh, Afterwards. <laughs> How much coordination do you do with groups who are are looking to promote entrepreneurship regionally? We we do a great deal of coordination. That is definitely our our aim. Uh, the SBDC is very collaborative. We have a, a list of 100 plus partners across the state. So we are uh, we are not exclusive in our services. If somebody works with the SBDC, we're delighted and encouraged if they're also working with with others as well. Uh, so uh, yeah, by default, we have a very collaborative stance. So, uh, it kind of depends on which organizations are out there in terms of how the SBDC complements the fit of other organizations. But I I always encourage encourage businesses to be well aware of what's out there. The reason I became involved with the SBDC was originally as a small business person that became a client, got some help, then you know, with the next business, I guess, some more help, and eventually joined the SBDC advisory board, and you know, the years and years later, joined the organization as the, the director. But after all those years of SBDC exposure, serving on the advisory board, being a client, once I came on the inside two years ago and I could see what we offered, it was a bit stunning to me. I thought, wow, as a business person, I left a lot of assistance on the table. I left money on the table. There's more that the SBDC could have done for me. As I learned more about the other great organizations in our state from all across the state, from what MEDC does, what so many partner organizations do, PTECs do, I came to realize more and more I missed 
dozens of opportunities to get additional support. I just didn't know they were out there. So as a business, it definitely pays off to research and poke at all of these different organizations that are out there and you know, assess how they can benefit your business. I'm involving y'all with uh, mentoring on business technology options for customers clients. I'm sorry, can you ask the question? How involved are y'all with uh, mentoring for business technology discussions with your clients, you know, if the company needs email or whatever? Oh, yes, we, the question is how, how involved are we in tech discussions of you know, tech roadmaps, uh, tech upgrades. We, we try to stay at a very high level there. We can talk about the importance of you know, tech road mapping and operational excellence in general, but we don't step down into the details uh, kind of by intention, partly because of resources and also partly because there's businesses out there that do that consulting and our, our aim is to not compete with the private sector. So high level guidance there, but not the details. Awesome. Great. Great. Thank, Thank you. you very much.